Greetings, peace, everybody. Welcome back to Community Radio. I'm your host, Kim, and we are back this Tuesday with another segment. And I just want to quickly say thank you all for tuning in. And I look forward to our conversation today. Um, Another thing I wanted to say before we get started is I just wanted to say peace and what's up to all the ladies that were on the call yesterday. As I state in just about probably all the shows, <laughs> and uh, we we have a Monday Google Hangout with some of the female students of I knew, and this is kind of our time to you know vent, bond, uh, help each other with the work, um, the assignments, and things like that to talk about whatever we want to talk about. And I encourage all of you if you're a female student and you have some questions maybe about some things that she has said, or you just, you know, you're looking for that community of women where you feel safe to discuss some things and you need that feminine support, um, go to anewlifeglobal.org and hit join our community and make sure when you fill out that form that you specify that you would like to be a part of the Monday call and we will make sure we get you added to the list. So I just wanted to say um, peace to the sisters that were on the call yesterday. We had another great conversation where we all learned a lot. And um, again, it's just good to have that support. I look forward to that call every Monday. So it's good to have that support because I think we're all kind of pretty distant from each other. So it's good to talk to some other women. Um, Before we get started today, I wanted to address something that Chief has said, I think he said this in the last show that he did, <laughs> he touched on it a little bit, uh, oh, let's see, hmm. we keep, uh, I'm still, we're still getting customer service questions in crazy spots where they should, do not belong, all over different websites, under YouTube videos, all over the place. Um, Chief has said it I've said it we've been saying it for years now since we've been on the radio that if you have a question or a customer service any kind of question customer service whatever to send your questions to questions at anunation.org your question will get deleted (laughs) at some point Um, Chief keeps going over this And I also, you know, I don't want to just jump on that person. I kind of want to bring all of the students, the archive students and regular students, you know, kind of call you all out a bit too, because Chief or I shouldn't have to continue to, you know, direct other people who are trying to get involved of where they should put their questions. This is the kind of thing, you know, at some point this, uh, the, the idea or the sense of community has got to kick in with everybody. Um, if you see a student has put a question somewhere where they shouldn't have, and you've heard me say it, you've heard Chief say it hundreds of times, you can answer their question. You know, you can, you can make a comment under their comment, because I noticed that a lot of people comment on the YouTube videos. Why not make a comment underneath theirs and say, look, you know, if you have a question, you can send your question to questions at onunation.org or answer their question for them. You know, um, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about community. And is this stuff really sinking in? Like the chief of the king of the kingdom or of the village or whatever should not have to address those things every single time. And so I've said it. He said it. Everybody else that's, you know, had a show on Under Nation, we've all said it. If you have a question, send your questions to questions at Under Nation. Do not post them all over the different web pages. And now I see that um, since Chief is answering uh, some of the comments or making, you know, highlighting some of the comments on the YouTube pages, of course, we're getting more questions in and people are making more comments, which is good. But also, like I said, be that archive student that you say you are or the student that you say you are when you see somebody doing something inappropriate or saying something inappropriate and direct them in the right place to go. 
that's what we're talking about. We're talking about a sense of community. Everybody can't get in Chief's ear all the time. And it seems like that, that's like the goal. You know, nobody wants to be in the village. Nobody wants to do that. Everybody just wants attention from the chief and he's not going to do that. Um, we got to, you know, we got to help each other out. It's the same thing with our new spiritual training phase one. People have questions. Uh, they don't utilize the form that chief has put in place. There's a form for the students. Everybody wants chief to answer their question. And he's even stated this in a show once before. He's not going to. If he does, it's a privilege, but it's not his job to answer those questions. You have hundreds of students, maybe thousands going through phase one. And some of the questions that you have have already been answered in the forums. So I encourage you and I urge you all to please, please, please use all of the resources, all of the forms, everything that we have put in place to help each other out as fellow students or if you aspire to be a student. This is one way you can step up, okay? So if you all uh, go back to that video and you see that question, I'm not going to respond to it. Um, I've already done it. Uh, let's just see if any of the students will step up and be that student and say, hey, you know, if you have a question, this is where you go, you know? We don't always have to address it. Um, I'm going to bring in a caller real quick. 813, peace. Greetings. 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 How's everything going? How's everything going? Everything's good. How are you? I'm all right. I I'm glad you're talking about it because it was on my mind, too, because I was thinking about something that you said a long time ago. And this is, and this is why I'm, I'm real clear when I tell you. I'm not mm -hmm. a student just yet. I haven't gone through that, that phase where I register as a student. Yet, mm -hmm. you know, I'm waiting for my time for that to happen. I'm, I'm, I'm saving my money. I'm getting my money correct first. I have to put myself into a position where I'd be able to be a proper student to you. You know what I'm saying? And for the mm -hmm. school house, all the members of this. Because I don't want to be a burden to them with a lot of other things that I have to do. I know I have to focus on my own personal path first before I can get really moving and elevate. That's, what, that's one thing that I would say for myself. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, one thing she had a had a show about was soft and hard protocols you know uh, right. we put up soft fences like him sitting there saying look this 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 and this that's spoken word but when he has to block you and he has to uh find a way to eliminate you from all the resources that are available through to do loud enlightenment transformation and animation that's when he's putting up the hard protocol right. now, now he's like look you can't you, you can't just come here with that that bullish you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I, I recognize in myself that I'm not, I, you know, I'll, I'll take my steps and the things I can do true uh, as as my individual, especially dealing with the, with dual health. And, um, you know, I've taken some of the web, web seminars and I'm taking a mm -hmm. uh, uh, free, free course and even utilize the, the website for so much information. You can deal with rituals, mm -hmm. deal with orishas, it deals with just things that you can use to make your get your mind right and and when i say right man i'm not saying you have to be perfect to get into it you, you should be in a place where you're comfortable to sit there and, and study to take focus on the things that you change in your life you know what i'm saying you should be in a position where you're able to do those things but if you're just sitting there listening to a youtube video and you think that this is the answer no that's not it the answer is just is ourselves first yeah. And we can't, we, uh, just, uh, me as a business owner too, it's like, look, I, if I had somebody just calling me directly, constantly trying to find an update for what they're, what I'm working on, uh, that's not going to work too well. Cause I'm, I'm on the field. I'm out here working. Right. I'm, I'm not busy, but I'm, I'm progressed. I'm pro I, I have a progressive day. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's, it's, it's very hard for, uh, individuals and i'm not just talking about myself but it's very hard for everyone to be uh that's putting themselves in a place of leadership and business opportunity and business entrepreneurship to handle things that really don't pertain to bringing the financing bringing the the the, the message out spreading the media that needs to be done it, it doesn't it doesn't help us to move forward it has those little blocks or the mm -hmm. interruption all the time so 
you know, I, I, I like I agree. You know, every time Chief, yeah. Chief has to straighten somebody out, it's like I, I recognize where that's coming from. Only right. because I'm in it also, you know what I'm saying? And some right. people, you know, like they're, 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 sitting, they're sitting at home, they're, they're not doing nothing to try to change their situation, but they look at YouTube, Facebook, or social media for an answer, and they go on, go on people that are actually doing something, and, and kind of, what's the word, uh, I don't know, I feel like she's had a show about this, I don't know if it was this show, but it was uh, people that come into your, come into uh, your environment and your community and disturb, disrupt, mm -hmm. bring disruption to it, and feel just like, okay, you gotta do it. Yeah, just to have yeah. something to do, or just, just to throw salt, I don't want to say salt, throw some, mm -hmm. throw, throw a monkey wrench in the, in, the, in the engine, you know what I'm saying? So, and I, I agree, salt and hard protocol. If people utilize mm -hmm. that just in their own life, <laughs> it will be great, it will be, it will be a dead, right. their lives will be a lot better, so. Right. And like I said, if you are, you know, we get a lot of people that comment on the videos. If you see somebody has a, a customer service question in the comments, you know, if, if you've been listening to Chief, you know what he said about things like that. You can comment and say, you know, make sure you send your questions to questions at animation.org. Or, you know, we have to, like I said, at some point, this stuff has, has got to click. When we talk about community and we talk about helping each other out and stuff like this, these are little small things that we're talking about. But everybody's sitting back, like she just said before, waiting to be serviced. You bring it to me. No, I don't want it from the person that's on the same level as me. I want to get it directly from the chief. You know, and you have to imagine in your mind when we when we talk about all these great African civilizations and these great kingdoms and dynasties we had. Did you see the chief of those civilizations or the head of those civilizations dealing with the little mundane things like that? No, they would tell you to talk to somebody else. Or even chief um, has said in a show once when he was going through his one of his initiations and one of his trainings, he didn't learn directly from the chief. He learned from a child. I think he was like maybe 10, 10 years old, 10 or 11 years old or something, and didn't even speak English. He's given us that story before. But this is the person that they sent him to learn from. So, you know, just in saying that, we have to be this community that we so desire to have, you know. So if you see something like that, make sure you just, you know, be that student to step up. Everybody, like I said, it seems like everybody's just trying to get the attention of the chief by saying something clever or you know, or whatever it may be, you know, in comments and things, or just waiting to be serviced. They ask their questions. They want to, oh, this is a way I can get a question in the chief. Let me, let me type something here, or let me go to this web page. Let me just throw it everywhere. Cause sometimes we'll get it in customer service and we'll get it on all the web pages. We'll get it under the YouTube thing, you know, somewhere where it's completely unrelated and it's going to get deleted. So if you have a question, make sure you send it to the right place if you would like an answer. So that's right. my gripe about that for today. Well, let, me uh, add, let me add something real quick. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I, I'm an archive utilizer. I utilize the archive. I'm not even putting myself in that archive student concept. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I, will, I will sit there and say, as an archive utilizer, I write notes to almost every every show that we that you get, that Chief drops, even to the community radio shows. And I've been doing that mm -hmm. for a very long time. So it's yeah. uh, those notes and I've shared them multiple times multiple times on, on the YouTube. I've never had mm -hmm. one to comment, someone to uh, uh, maybe uh, put in another interpretation to what I what Chief what Chief Chief stated and I wrote down. I, I will tell you, look, I listen to the shows I don't want to say religiously. I went. I went listen to the show continuously, and I go mm -hmm. back. I go back into even blog talk. And the only reason why I do that is because I'm working on myself, mm -hmm. and that's the most important thing. Like Chief was saying, it's not about it's not about whatever uh, uh, indigenous system that we're really doing. They all work the same. The point is, right. man, what are we doing for ourselves? How are we putting? How are, how are we building our character? You know what I'm saying? And I know for a fact, I can sit there and tell you that I'm an asshole. <laughs> but 
And I know, you know there's a, I know there's a couple things that, that I need to work on personally. You know what I'm saying? And I don't like, another thing I don't like to do is spreading my issues on other people or bringing them into a place where it's, it, it's, it's divine you're bringing, bringing in a corruption. So mm-hmm. I would rather I would rather make sure that I have myself together. I'm not, for example, I'm not going to go play football without football pads. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm not going to go play basketball without basketball shoes and shorts. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I want to, when I, when I, when I do, because I am going to be a student of, of Sedulo House, that when I do, I want to have all my gear ready. I want mm-hmm. I want to have my wind, my breathing, everything ready. But I'm gonna but I'm also gonna approach it as a baby. But I'm gonna right. be prepared as a baby. So Well thank you for that, Anwar. I hope everybody's listening because um just to answer another customer service question that made me think of something else when you were speaking. Um the archive shows all of the books, all of the classes, these are all these, all those things go with phase one of the training. Sometimes we get questions about specific exercises or people will just have, just throw questions out in the air. And I guarantee you, there are probably about 500 shows now or over 500. And they keep growing. I guarantee you, if you search the archives, Chief has probably already answered your question. So those of you who are students, just so you know, the shows are um, requ- requ- excuse me, required as well as taking phase one, going over that information. And you have not completed phase one until you can teach it. Chief always says that. You know, we have a lot of people that say they've completed it, but he will tell you that if you cannot thoroughly teach that class, uh, teach phase one after you finish. You can't recite the Adoras and grasping the root of divine power. You don't know some of the some uh, basic things. You can't do divin- divination, nine position divination from the book or, you know, uh, five position or whatever. You haven't passed phase one. So that's just another heads up to everyone. Like all of the stuff that he does is, you know, it all goes together. So it's not just, I can just take this one class and I'm good. Where's phase two? It's not going to work like that. So just so you know, all those things are supplements to the class. Okay. So, okay, now I'm done. <laughs> but I just What's wanted up? to answer some of those questions because we keep we get those questions a lot, you know, and I just wanted to answer some of those. I uh, hope uh, everybody's listening. But today... Um, again, the number is 347-945-7680. Just press the number one if you have a question, and I'll bring you in. Um, we don't have a specific topic, but as usual, I'll always be thinking about something or whatever just to kick the conversation off. So uh, last strong on uh, our shows, we were just speaking about um, kind of self-hate. I'm going to mute you for a second, on more, and then I'll bring you back. Uh, we were just talking about uh, self-hate amongst black people. Like, do we secretly hate black people um, just based on the way we treat each other, um, based on, you know, our behaviors in our communities, et cetera, et cetera, you know, relationships and everything else. And um, it brought me to thinking about this movie, Birth of a Nation, and just before I um, go too far into it, I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to go and see it uh, this strong end. So, you know, and I don't want any spoiler alerts or anything, but I, I, I pretty know, pretty much know what happened, but I'm familiar with the story. So it's okay. Um, but I wanted to ask everybody, have you seen the movie? What did you think about the movie? Um, did you have anything that you would like to say about the controversy around uh, the director, Nate Parker himself. Um, for those who haven't seen it, will you see it? And, um, you know, how is, you know, the actions that take place in this movie, how are they related to our discussions that we've had just on the relationships between Black people, um, how we kind of don't like each other anymore, uh, and just some of the hurtful and hurtful and cruel things we do to each other. Um, do you think there were scenes in that movie 
that depicted a lot of that, that we can relate to today. Okay, so um, I kind of like to talk about that today. I was speaking with a family member about it um, uh, last night. I, like I said, I haven't seen it yet. And they were just encouraging me to uh, make sure I see the movie. Um, but I, uh, prior to the show, I was watching an interview that Nate Parker did on on the movie. I think it was on, was it The Breakfast Club or something like that? And uh, he, you know, people, they were asking him, and, you know, just to talk about the self-hate thing, but they were asking him, who gave you money for it? Because as you know, he put up all the money he had, mortgaged his house, and then just went on a hunt to try to find people to back the movie. He had even made an announcement. He was like, I'm not acting again. I'm not acting in another movie. I'm not going to write another movie. I'm not doing anything related to acting until I get this movie completed. He was on a mission to complete movie. And I think it took him about eight years to do it. And um, none of your black, superheroes (laughs) gave any money they asked him about it and they asked him who did you ask and he said let me tell you I asked everybody he was like all those names you got in your head I asked them none of your mega these these rap stars who claim they're they're super rich none of them gave a dime Oprah Tyler Perry Michael Jordan all these people None of them gave any money. And like he said, he begged everybody, put up his own little hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> mortgage his house. And mind you, he is married with children. So I'm pretty sure that was a hot topic in the house. You know, you know, we got to keep the lights on because like he said, he's not a millionaire, but he got it done. It took him eight years to do it. You know, again, it speaks to um, what Chief has spoken to us about before, just being sold out on your mission. Um, and just so you know, too, this, this guy, he's not a conscious dude like that. You know, when we think about conscious community and whatever, he said that he only learned about, uh, Nat Turner when he turned 21. And that was, you know, of course, probably, I think he said it was in college. He took a black studies class or something. So that one class impacted him so deeply at 21 that he was like, you know what? I got to do something about this. I got to make this movie. So I thought that that was um, something worth putting out there. Like he gave up everything that he is to, you know, like making money. Like I said, he's not a millionaire, but he quit his job for eight years to get this done and just stepped out on faith that, look, not faith, but well, faith and the fact that he was just so completely dedicated to his mission. He was like, I'm going to get this story told. I'm going to do it. Um, I don't care how long it takes. I got to make this movie. So, um, yeah, again, you didn't have to go through some huge conscious, you know, read all the get deep overnight books and watch YouTube videos and everything. It only took one class, you know, for him to be so inspired. And I encourage you all to check that interview out, too. It's, it was a really good interview. But because he's so passionate about it. It t- you can tell that it really did touch him to make uh, make that movie. I'm going to go to a, pick up a call real quick on, let's see, 864. Greetings, you're on Community Radio. Uh, hello? Mm-hmm. Peace. All right, yeah. Uh, peace, peace. This, this is Pedro. My name is Pedro Pun. I am in the class, but... I'm one of those people who he been talking about <laughs> as far as not been staying stand on on top of it. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Thanks, Tom. But as far as you know, staying on top of it, with the movie, you said he wasn't. You said he wasn't country, conscious, or he or he was. I'm really saying he wasn't just, conscious at the level that we think. You know, like we think we got to take yeah. on. Uh, uh, you know, we got to go through initiations. We got to do this. We got to do that. Like, brother, you yeah. got to grow locks. You got to, you know, you got to go through all these black think tanks, all this other kind of stuff. He didn't even know yeah. who Matt Turner was until he was 21. 
Yeah, man, mm-hmm. that is major. That mm-hmm. is, it is major right there, Coach. I know I had a, a, the same type idea of just writing a book on Matt Turner when I was sparked up in my rage, but mm-hmm. that was like that was like five years ago or whatever. But I ain't, I didn't stay on top of it or whatever. I, I me honestly, I've been type to. I've been experiencing this like all on my own with becoming conscious and trying to um, piece all these puzzles together. But like, like you say, for him to not be, you know, conscious in that one spot to make him get a drive like that for eight years, like he had something in him anyway that was waiting right. to come out. Cause I, you know, I'm still trying to figure out Exactly how I want to go about everything. <laughs> Being real, and you, know, you know. In that video, he said though, he said something really important. He said, you know, uh, someone asked him, you know, in the movie they were saying that Nat Turner n- knew as a child that he was the chosen one, that he was chosen to do something special. Uh. And they asked him, did he know? Did Nate himself? Did he know that he was? going to be chosen to do something this monumental or this special and you know what he said look he said no you know he was like you have to use your platform whatever it is whatever it is that you do let your gifts come out through that platform everybody's not an actor everybody's not a director everybody's not a rapper everybody's not a teacher everybody's not a chief um, yeah. But you do have something like everybody on this planet has a purpose. Like your soul came here with to do something. You're supposed to be doing something. So whatever yeah. that something is, use that platform to to express it. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to. Yeah. You don't have to be an actor. I'm not an actor. I you know filmmaker anything like I don't have connections to people like he does so I can't you know get anything out that way yeah but yeah that's, there's that's, something that's, that's, that you can do yeah and that's major because you know a lot of you know of course a lot I mean a lot of I'm sure a lot of people you know who who building or joining the class don't have like you say that type of access to reach out to people to start up a movie or do something that that major like I know, I I don't really know anybody that I could go, to. Mm-hmm. but that's why I say it's just one of them things where I mean it's like like with me I've been I started the class like in 2013, mm-hmm. and even before the class like I was studying hard, building on all type of subjects, uh, just different stuff, talking to different people people in different groups like the Moors and uh, uh, some of the Wapians and all that you know just really trying to find right. out where you know I could fit but of course mm-hmm. running into you you know I ain't you know, I'm still in the archives myself that's why I don't hardly call in at all because I pretty much find all the answers in one of them yeah. exactly. you know, at least some of the answers in the archives so I mean, that's why I don't really say much, but I just had to pretty much tune in on this one because, I mean, it just amazed me. Then you said it took them eight years. Like, that's crazy because yeah. that old, that old by energy, that old by the light energy, and he actually came out with a creative movie. Mm-hmm. And, and, and within them eight years, like, I mean, that's amazing because my, my, when I had my reading done, I, I had the same energy or whatever, but... I'm just trying to get with some people that can put me in that same that same box. Like that's what I really been focused on lately, just networking, and finding people. But really you know what? With. Even as you say that, I have to go back to what Chief has said and what I announce on every show. To join the community, go to anewlifeglobal.org, fill out the form, and tell mm-hmm. us what you can do. We have a. a so many students um, registered for the class and the free class and who watch and everything. But no, everybody just wants to sit back and be service. Nobody wants to step forward and say, you know what? Hey, I can do this. I'm a photographer. Oh, I sing. Oh, I do something yeah. else. I know Brother Anwar has 
a media company um or he makes beats and stuff like that he stepped up and volunteered to help out um we got so many different people some people are good at organizing we got some people who are good at graphic design what whatever it is yeah. That's that's exactly what Chief is trying to do. Rally everybody up, get everybody off their couch, and say, "Okay, what is it that you said you can do? Okay, I'm gonna try to find a place for you." In addition to helping you clean up your stuff, in addition yeah. to helping you try to find yourself, all this other stuff that we got to do. But nobody wants to do that. Like I said, we we've got students that won't even step up and say, "Dude." you posting your question in the wrong spot. If you got a question, go yeah. here. You know, so what is community? We keep talking about community, community. Yeah, man, we need to get together. Yeah. Like, it's not clicking. Like, we're not, it's not registering in our heads what Chief is talking about. Yeah. It just sounds real good. It's just deep. It sounds good. But nothing is clicking. I, yeah, because I, I personally think from my own experience, I know I get it. You know, I got children or whatever, so I get distracted real easily when it comes to actually trying to do anything spiritual. Like, I don't, not like I get distracted from me wanting to do it, but like just from other things happening that might throw off my timing or whatever, or put me in a position where I might not can't get to something or whatever. But like, as far as like doing stuff like and that's that's major because i don't i don't sit there i don't i, don't, I think i have filled out I don't, i'm not really sure it might have been right when i first started though but i need to go back and do that again because i mean it's a lot i can do myself but it's just really finding out that one thing that that i really just want to stick with doing like mm-hmm. Cause I could do so much myself, like as far as like music and uh, just different blog blogging and all that, like recording and mm-hmm. with the camera and all that. Like, uh, like I got a good bit of people that I've introduced to the to the culture or whatever that that really just they they want more of this too. They want to be able to. Um, call in or, or whatever but you know everybody got their own excuses mm-hmm. so, I'm yeah at some point you gotta give on. up the, at some point you gotta stop making the excuses at some point yeah. if, you're, if you really want to do something yeah. or just be quiet <laughs> you know or yeah. just, just don't say anything um, I'm going to bring in another caller. You can stay on the line. If you like um, to comment, just comment whenever, but um, mute your mic if you're not speaking. Okay. All right. 804? 804. Greetings. Greetings. How are you today? I'm well. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, I actually personally haven't seen uh, the movie myself, <clears throat> but I did mm-hmm. see the the interview that you're talking about on mm-hmm. um, The Breakfast Club. Yeah. I think I saw another video as well. And I think uh, in some ways it's, it's probably better to talk about that just in terms of uh, this month's topic uh, as the magician and manifestation. And, mm-hmm. um, so you just talked about the four, four planes of, um, of, of I believe it was creation or manifestation. But um, yeah, he did not quit. He kind of set his mind on a goal. And at all costs, he was going to accomplish that goal and everything fell in place. Right. Um, as it should have. And he might be, for all, all intents and purposes, at this point, he may have been a thousand there before, but I remember the deal that he got from Fox. And there were some other um, some other suitors. But I mm-hmm. remember the deal being something like $18 million. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure his investment got the budget was thirty. <laughs> the budget, oh, the, the budget, budget was thirty million dollars. Thirty, yeah. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that, I mean, but that I'm sure that helped because mm-hmm. I'm sure they didn't make the movie. You know, maybe it was already made when they got the money for the distribution deal. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe we don't know all the ins and outs uh, behind all of that either. But um, I think beyond anything. Uh, another thing to look at would be the timing of the movie 
You know, mm-hmm. why now? Another thing to look at would be, you know, the fact that he, he persevered. Um, mm-hmm. You got other components in there. Um, I, a lot of people are trying to focus or distract uh, us from being able to see what has been accomplished here. You know, whether it's a slave movie, as some right. people say, or um, how black people were treated. or uh, But the, 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 the truth of the matter is that this brother had a story that he felt the world needed to hear and he did everything he could to put that story out in front and I don't think there's anything else to really really discuss beyond that right or yeah rape allegations and things of that nature um because mm-hmm. we're not really we're not really here I mean we can judge him but that's so, almost like a separate topic or conversation um I don't know what do you think well, I brought it, I wanted to bring it up because, like I said, last Strong's discussion, we were just talking about uh, relationships between black men and women, uh, how it's deteriorated, why it's deteriorated, and is this a form of self-hatred that we have? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a bigger form of self-hatred than we'd like to admit. Um, you know, going beyond just bleaching our skin and straightening our hair. Like, we got some really, really serious stuff underneath that's going on with us. And it comes out in our children. It comes out in the fact that we don't support each other's businesses. Uh, We don't value each other's businesses to support them. You know, we'll complain about the service. We'll complain about the prices. um, We'll devalue it. um, And just to put this out there, again, we get emails saying, oh, I really, really, really want to join a class and develop myself, but, and I, I really want to get a reading. I see the readings are 150, but all I got is 75. Mm-hmm. You know, stuff like that. This is how we treat each other. Like, we don't value each other's uh, expertise, training, businesses, anything. But, you know, we'll patronize other people you know, businesses outside of our culture and we don't question them at all about their prices, about the quality of their service, anything. So I know some people have seen the movie and there are some things in that movie, including all the hate and everything that surrounded him and the rape uh, charges that were dropped. Um, that came, You know, a lot of things that came out about him that people are saying, well, you know what? I'm not going to go see, see the movie just because of this. You know, I think mm-hmm. even he said in that interview that Gabrielle Union, someone that was in the movie, even kind of turned her back on him a little bit because, or was hating on him a little bit because she was saying, oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a product of rape, too. So she couldn't really get behind him, but she was in the movie, you know? So, you know, again, it kind of just reminds me of the conversations that we had last strong, just about a deeper form of self-hatred that we have each other and the way we treat each other, just from childhood throughout adulthood. If I could, I, w- I would offer one other thing, because um, I agree with everything you're saying. I think I think the real um, problem, though, is that it's not that there's a problem between these are all symptoms. I think <clears throat> the real problem is that black people or the black man or the black woman etc don't I think one of the reasons why they run into problems is because they don't really have a head um, there's nothing really giving them direction that is their own they don't give themselves direction they look outside themselves objectively for um, for direction and so that direction could come from the news network it could come from the church it could come from and, and again those things are are, are direction they were given a long time ago as well so I I think the problem really goes into um, and what's being forced uh, upon black people right now is that they have to develop a head they have to develop um, it's almost like it's a headless body they have to they need a head in order to to be able to go in a direction Um, you can look at it with like you said the bleach and skin and all this other stuff but you know, you could have conversations and, and many, many, many uh, uh, radio shows about about those types of things. But um, it's, I mean, it really comes down to that. I mean, I, 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 I own a contracting business. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm a commercial real estate agent. And, and 
very few of my clients in commercial real estate are black people. Right. Um, I in my contract in business flipping houses, um, we've we've hired black people before. Or we've had hired brothers and sisters before, but they'll be the ones trying to steal your business or whatever, whatever. That doesn't mean we we stop. We just probably have, we, we go a little lower in terms of trying to find younger men and women. Mm-hmm maybe 13, 14, who have situations. They, their mindset isn't to steal your business at that point, and then they, yeah. they learn to steal or trade. But um, this is just, it's kind of, you know, again, it just goes back to, uh, as a community, or as a people, uh, rather, there just isn't any direction, really. You know, and there really isn't mm-hmm. any excuse when you look at, when you look at who I work with, you know, I got right. Spanish guys on the site right now doing the floors. Mm-hmm. Um, Korean guy just put windows in this house. Mm. Um, they got a truck on it. It's just a truck with some ladders on it. Right. Um, the, the cabinets I put in the kitchen are made in China. Mm. Are you seeing what I'm saying? And I bet um, you they get raw materials from Africa. <laughs> Most probably so. Materials. Probably mm-hmm. so. It's just these are these are nicer cabinets, but at the same time, you know, um, it's not hard work. It's, you know, right. it's just yeah. we could take yeah. over for real, just based yeah. on that. But in, those are jobs that we even overlook, just specifically mm-hmm. because the direction that we, the directive that we've been given, given, isn't necessarily in that domain or category it's more you know in order for me to floss a ball I might need to right uh, have a break right. I don't know mm-hmm. and then you know like the example that you used um, we don't have a lot of people willing and, and I've experienced this in the class as well we don't have a lot of people willing to be students so just like the example you use you have to go to a 13 year old young men or, or whatever to get them to, you know, try to, you know, appre- be, become an apprentice, like learn a skill, learn a trade. Like we don't want to go back through that for some reason. We feel like we're just above it or maybe it's an age thing. I don't know, but it's like, we don't value scholarship at all, whether it be, you know, going to college uh, training under someone like like you said you're a contractor you and you have all these men on site I think brother Byron called in once before and spoke on this you know he was <clears throat> having something some work done and his son younger son went out to talk with one of the builders once his one one of his tools had broken and you know his son kind of encouraged him to not give up because he was about to just quit for the day and you know walk off the job and not try to repair what had been broken. But it's like like you said, um, I don't know what it is. It's like we don't we don't want to train for anything. Like we don't value that. If somebody takes you under their wing and say, hey, okay, let me show you, we just want to skip right to the end. No, just show me how to do it. Just give me the ritual. I don't need to know all that other stuff. You mm-hmm. know so. They don't want to learn how to hit a nail properly. Just show me how to build a house. I can just I can just look at the picture or a YouTube video and do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of you know that's that 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 small example is emblematic of what the entire community is going. There's nobody. I do have a brother who is um on site, but I could have had this whole job. Mm-hmm. The guys who demo demo this house were all brothers and I, I I asked him I said man why don't all these, why don't one of you guys go to school and become a plumber one of the electricians yeah. you could carry it all the way through you at the beginning they got to call mm-hmm. you first clear everything right. out, out so that so the so the Spanish people come in so uh, the Korean guy comes in why can't you guys create a guild mm-hmm. of uh, artisans and then you know split the money up but we had some issues with that too because uh, there was one guy in it, you know, I don't know, it was, it was something else. So, you know, that's, that's not the way that it's going to be, I think, uh, going forward. Uh, me and a few other people are consciously pushing um, to teach some of the youth some mm-hmm. of these, uh, some of these uh, skills. And I think that's where it yeah. starts. When, when you give something, 
Uh, I think uh, someone else talked about reciprocity. I think the the number nine in uh, in Yoruba means to turn, mm-hmm. or it has something to do with reciprocity, uh, which also is the number for completion. But when you when you give something back, it come it's, when you give something, it's going to come back to you. Right. And if you give something to the community, then I think that's the foundation we have to begin to build upon is, is, mm-hmm. is giving to, to the youth and setting that yeah. precedent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would you like to give out uh, any information while you're on the line about your company for people who are listening who would like to maybe, uh, like I said, become an apprentice or just get some information or find, you know, get some work under you? Because I know that there are a lot, we probably do have a lot of contractors, you know, or people, Uh uh, plumbers or electricians. Would you like to give out any contact information? Yeah, yeah. You want me to give it out over the radio? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, my name is Shaka and my phone number is 804-516. Six six two four. Again, that's eight zero four five one six 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 two four. And um, I'm in the Northern Virginia, Washington D.C. area. Okay, we've got a lot of students and a lot of listeners from that area too. So there you have it. Again, like I said, the purpose of a new Asafo Chief Speaks, all these shows that we do, even the A New Life Global Ministry, is all to try to bring people together, people of color together or melanated people together so that we can try to build something like everybody has a skill or talent for something. And um, we just got to get together, like get off the couch. Like you keep saying you want to, you want to do something. You want to be a photographer. You want to learn how to build something. You want to, you know, there are so many people who are out there that are willing to give some time or talk to you on the phone or send you an email, whatever it is to try to get the ball rolling. You know, we're just trying to create like this web of people all over so that we can kind of, you know, we got people all over the place, all over, all over this country, abroad, everywhere that are students that have something that they can contribute. Don't think that your contribution is too small or that what you have to offer doesn't matter. You know, there's a place for everybody. Like you said, everybody can't, everybody can't be chief. Like you said, with the the home, you know, the house example, somebody's got to put the plumbing in. Somebody's got to do the wiring. (laughs) You know, somebody has to know how to do those things. Somebody's got to take the trash out. You know, everybody wants a glamorous high position, but for the most part, some of us aren't even built for that built for all the stress and everything that comes with it or all the responsibility that comes with it. Just focus on what you can do. Um, I'm going to go to another caller, uh, Shaka. If you'd like to comment, you can stay on. I'm not going to mute your line. Just press mute on your phone if you'd like, and you can come back in whenever you like, okay? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Appreciate Thank you for your comment. I'm going to go to, I think this is Brother Byron. Greetings. It is. Greetings, Sister Kim. How are you doing? Greetings. I'm well. How are you? Well, very good, thank you. We're okay, thank you very much, yes. Yeah, um, I was just listening in and enjoying the conversation thus far. Um, but um, something came to me when um, Brother Shaka was speaking. Mm-hmm. So he, um, so I'm in the UK, I'm based in the UK, so I know that within the UK, um, it may be different in the States, but if I was a if I if I had a business similar to um, Brother Shaka, I might be able to apply for um, funding, or even apply for match funding to develop a an apprentice scheme that I would I could own or control. Um, mm. So generally in the UK, in deprived in relatively deprived areas, there might be some local or central government funding whereby individuals or businesses could apply for financial support to develop an apprentice scheme and so I'm not sure where Brother Shaka is located but if if there's a high African African American community and there's Mm -hmm. areas of deprivation then he might be able to target some funding uh, target some young men or young women who want to go into the building trade um, get them educated and trained in particular skills and mm-hmm. then he could have access to skilled professionals as and when he requires them for his business. 
Um, I'm not putting anything on to Brother Shaka because, you know, he's, he's a man who's got his own things that he needs to deal with. But I am certain that if that was to happen, he would get significantly more EA for his, his business. Mm-hmm. Um, and people, you know, and he, you know, his company would be elevated, and he would get blessings just for reinvesting some of his time and knowledge and know-how um, back into the community. So that's what came mm-hmm. to me as I was sat here listening to the radio show. And um, and with regards to the film, I'm really looking forward to having the chance to view to view the film um, because of this. Because it's on an independent label, it doesn't come to the UK till January. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, next year. So um, I'm looking forward to being able to take some time out and go and check out the film. Um, yeah. I'm personally not paying any attention to any of that media hype around the builder that made the film. Um, it's interesting how any time African people, many times when African people do something successful, Within the European media, you'll find all these negative stories coming out to try and pull down, uh, mm-hmm. the, you know, the progress that's made. So I'm not watching that, you know. So you know, I'm not watching that at all. And for me, I don't know any of the facts behind this case. But for me, from where I'm sitting, if a brother in America has a serious allegation against them, and it doesn't even pursue to court or the charges are dropped or he's gone through court and he's innocent then that even means to me he's even more innocent because the system right. is loaded against brothers in America anyway. So mm-hmm. I just I, I just really, um, you know, I, I, I personally congratulate the brother for his efforts. And um, mm-hmm. I never knew it took eight years. I never knew it took eight years to make. But um, mm-hmm. eight, eight is the number of Obatala. Mm-hmm. And right. um, I understand that Obatala is a slow-moving Arisha. So maybe the eight years was right, and that signifies mm-hmm. the length of time it took to get this project built together. So I'm really happy for him, um, and I think as African people throughout the world, we should be happy for him because I feel that we sometimes get drawn into um, chanting down the good right. work that we see our brothers or sisters do. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you refer to it as, as self hate, but sometimes yes, it could be self hate, and sometimes in Jamaica we call we, we would call it either red eye or bad mind. Sometimes mm. just have bad mind to people. If I see somebody doing good, I'm not going to look on them with a positive eye. I'm going to give them cut eye or bad eye or bad mind. So you know, for me, we shouldn't have no bad mind to the brother man. He's done something good. He's done something. He's brought something to educate. Africans throughout the world about. So we should celebrate it, enjoy it, and congratulate the brother. That's yeah, what I think is Definitely. Good. Definitely. Mm. Thank you, uh, Brother Bai. I think that's an excellent idea, uh, Brother Shaka, if you're listening. That would be awesome. Um, you know, I was going through Facebook uh, recently, and I was going to ask you about this, Brother Byron. I, I forget where it's okay. uh, located in London, but I know there's been a lot of advertisement recently about uh, this Manhood Academy that has kind of kicked off in uh, in London uh, by some brothers okay. there. Um, and they uh-huh. have a really strong movement where they're doing um, this rites of passage. It's like uh, an awesome, awesome movement. I think you can check it out on Instagram at uh, manhood, uh, hashtag Manhood Academy. But someone okay. is friends with me on Facebook. I think he's uh, he's a part of it, and there's also uh, a, a GoFundMe thing that they have out um, that's called uh, Protect Our Boys London, where and I think that's the that's the GoFundMe project for Manhood Academy um, that you can mm-hmm. uh, check check out too on Go, GoFundMe. I was just wondering if you had heard of it. I know uh, Queen of Fua is doing something in 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 London. Uh, uh, I think it's like in the next few days and her son yeah. was there and he was part of it and so they invited him in to uh, to to help with the movement and everything but they have like a lot of young young boys and a lot of men have stepped up to the plate to be a part of it and I thought it was just you know from the looks of it like I said uh, I don't know much about it but I think it's like an awesome, awesome movement that they've got going. I don't know if you've heard about it. 
Okay. I've heard about it now, Sister Kim, and I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out and see what I can do. Oh, okay. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So definitely, that sounds really good. And anything, something like that that I can hopefully or willfully support. That that's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And, and the fact that you're saying that there's lots of positive men involved in that mm-hmm. already, I think that's 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 fantastic. That's yeah, fantastic. it is. That's it really, really is. Good. So yeah. I just I um it was just I just felt good about like you know so people are you know like getting inspired you know from from things like people are we are at a point where we're fed up and we're like okay we got to do something you know so like I was saying earlier it doesn't take. Like, everybody can't be a chief, everybody can't be a priestess, everybody can't be at the top, but you have something that you can give. You have something that that you can contribute, you know? So I thought it was just awesome to see all these black men get together and and start something for these young boys, you know? It was was an awesome, uh, awesome experience. So please check that that out. And if you can, let us know how it goes. Mm -hmm. I will do, because um, in... In London, African boys have it really hard, man. Um, mm. You know, it's like any other large city. Most of the African communities are in the inner city. In the inner cities where they have the worst health and the worst schools and the worst housing and the most wow. grief with the, with the police. So um, it would be really good to try and help and get involved with that program. So thank you for letting me know about this. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. I'm going to bring Brother Amwar back in. Again, I'm not going to mute you, uh, Brother Byron. You can just jump in whenever you feel like it. But um, I had muted Amwar okay. earlier because there was some background noise. But I just wanted to ask him, Amwar, are you there? And do you have any comments about anything that's been said so far? I am here, and i got two comments. Mm-hmm. Uh, for Brother Petro, I believe that's his name, Petro. Uh, mm-hmm. I would just say it's about him because um, I was there where he was at. You know, I got two kids of my own, and I was there where he was at, not knowing where to go, what direction to move, and so forth and so on. I was, what I learned and I, what I really took in, and especially going on the concept of going all in onto your, onto your idea, is that pick something. Whether right. or not whether or not that succeeds or fail or or, or, or you bring, makes gives you prosperity or gives you a, a headache again, it, there's a there's a success in the failure, there's a failure in the success. And like I've had to uh, I have a couple I have two businesses and one business, the, the one that's my bread maker, the one I do I'm doing right now currently, is the one that's bringing me the most uh, deficiency in my life. Uh, Mm -hmm. Let's just say like this. I I, I give people financial debt and I'm in financial debt. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So what what I have, what I have recognized is that, yes, I love doing media. And I do media all the way through. It's not just uh, music and beats and so forth and so on. I do uh, video and all that. And graphic design, web design, so forth and so on. But... um, uh, I love to do that. That's my heart. That's going to be my, my thing that I stay committed to. But like Brother Shaka, what I want to do for my bread and butter now is change over to uh, uh, renovations, uh, maintenance, and, and construction. I, I love wood. I love to deal with wood. So I want to deal, deal with something I can get on that level. And that's that. this will go into the question that I was having with Brother Shaka is that um, the... I don't really want to talk about the business concept, but that ability to be able to help people uh, re reinvent their house and stuff, how does that make you feel as as an entrepreneur? Does that make you feel very fulfilled for being able to do those things? Because that's really where I, what, why, why I want to get into uh, that type of work, because I've always loved to do construction. And if you look on my, my Facebook page, I do like furniture. And carpentry and mm-hmm. business and so on, furniture and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, let me so bring you like... back in. Call dropped for a second. Let me bring him back in real quick. Uh, 804. Are you there, Brother Shaka? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, actually, I do it for myself. So I, I fix the houses up and then sell them. Okay. Um, as opposed to, uh, um, I mean, the, the, let's say, 
that part of the business is in the works. But for the most part, I'll find a house that um, that I can buy inexpensively relative to the market, and I do calculations okay. and stuff like that. And then I, you know, I, I make those changes. Um, but the people who buy the house are pretty excited about it, you know. Uh, but right. they don't know was they don't know what state the house was in before. They just kind of buy it. Mm-hmm. You know, their right. their approach is totally different. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Uh, that that's, you answered my question pretty much uh, reasonably on the situation. So mm-hmm. thank you. No problem. I appreciate it. Yo. Okay. Did someone that have is a Pedro. question? Oh, Pedro. Yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, what's his name, brother? Brother Unwad? Yes. Yeah, I appreciate that, man, because, like I said, I need more more people who done experience, you know what I'm saying, going through this, because, like I said, I got, like, like I actually started a, a a group with a group of brothers and a few sisters. Uh, Carissa, she was supposed to be in it, but she got a lot of stuff she got going on. But uh, basically, well, we just... Getting people into uh, going back into agriculture and um, going out hunting and uh, uh, finding different uh, little landmarks and stuff that 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 we could go through to do like you know a little spiritual work or whatever and just kind of bring it you know just trying to bring it all together man but it's been kind of slow but I got a lot of people involved. And I'm just trying to get that going, and like it's a lot of different businesses that 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 can expand with this. Cause I got a, a lot of people who, like you say, do graphics designing and doing clothes. I sell shoes and hats myself. Um, like I say, with the music, um, we looking for people who know more about like you know herbs. And, plant life and stuff like that, you know, so, but as far as, like, financially, you know, I'm, I'm doing a lot, like, like I say, selling, uh, help yourself, clothes, shoes, shirts, recording at the studio, uh, a little part-time gig, you know, I got a lot going on, but it's just really trying to find something that I can stick to that's solid, that I can put my heart into, that's mm-hmm. where I'm at right now. Yeah, you know, well, um, I was just going to add real quick. Um, I hear uh, all you your comments and everything, and I just want to remind you, there's no fault in having, you know, all these different things you're good at. Because like she says, you men should have multiple streams of income. So yeah. it doesn't have to, you don't have to just sit like settle on one thing. Like you should have multiple streams of income. So I just want to throw that in there. It just made me think yeah, about it yeah. as you were speaking. I, I agree with that. I agree with that, and uh, I'm the same, same same concept. But what I was more implying is that, uh, let's say you you sell hats and uh, you get an income from that, right? Expand yeah. take that right now and expand that to the point where you can start seeing a lot more resi- more residual income on that section. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. eventually, what you probably might want to do is get rid of your part time. So you want to take your mind into the the category, the places where you're making profit in your yeah. in whatever stream of income in, and maximize that to the point where you can't do it. That, like with the with my with my website, and I'm still in the process of do, doing a couple a couple more things to it. But with my website, what I did, I tried to make sure that all the contact information and all the ways to purchase something from me is there on the site. Now from yeah. that from that site, from that from where it's at now, I know for a fact I still need a couple more uh so, some more software to go on there to make my functionality greater. So my next step yeah. on the site would be to do that. And and that's what I was more implying is that pick something, try to knock it out to the fullest of your ability and then and then if you have some other business that any uh business plans, which I do, you know, everybody has a lot of ideas but they don't know how to implement them in a in a strategic way. So my my thing is that let me work on the thing I know best first, and that's media. So let me go ahead and get this completely sharp and 100 percent, and get some income, residual income coming from this direction. And then even with my company that I'm doing now, that's gonna be my next phase. My next phase mm-hmm. is the one that I'm doing now. 
You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Now, and that's, that's, what, that's what I'm, I'm saying. Pick one thing, get it knocked mm-hmm. out, then go to the next. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, I mean, that would make a whole lot of sense, man. Like I gotta get more into that period, man. I, I don't like I don't usually be at home, so unless I'm watching the children or just you know doing little stuff around the house or whatever. Man. I need to get me a web page and all. Like I. I just uh, you, like, I, that's why I didn't I didn't even know about the interview that they had about the movie because I ain't even <laughs> mm-hmm. that's just how much I be you know I be busy so I don't yeah I don't even be knowing no new movies that come out really mm-hmm. I don't know none yeah I'm behind amazing. on a lot of them too <laughs> yeah <laughs> you'd be amazed how easy to do things once you step into it. yeah Sometimes you know what. We, the 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 internet has really leveled the playing field. I'm just gonna be yeah. honest. I mean, like it takes nothing to put up a website. It's not expensive. You know, it doesn't cost very much a month to to get a website. You got tutorials on how to um, set it yeah. up. You got services that pretty much do it for you. You know, I was just thinking uh, a few weeks ago about you know just starting businesses and things. You know, back in the day, we had to pay somebody for everything. You had to pay somebody yep. for signage. You had to pay somebody to develop a font. You had to pay somebody for pictures. You had to, you know, you had to pay all these individual little fees for everything. And now, like, you can do all of this probably for less than a hundred bucks a month. Like, it doesn't. Uh, a website doesn't cost very much. You know what I mean? So, I think yeah. the the you know now you can do your job from anywhere. You know, you just got to get you a good phone. Most of the stuff now you can do on a phone. You can do on a tablet. Um, yeah. You can be mobile. You can be on the go. Um, I, I remember I've, I've even done shows. <laughs> I'm on my way, you know, somewhere else or in the airport, you know, still, still working. Um, so, you know, try not to get yourself trapped in a situation where you feel like you got to be stationary somewhere to do it. Like you don't need a storefront anymore. And I was yeah. going to ask Amor if you would like to um, give out your information as well so that people can get in contact with you. Are you there for the Amor? Okay, maybe he's busy right now. I'll come back to him. Um, I'm going to go to 615. Peace, you're on Community Radio. Uh, greetings, everyone. Greetings. How are you today? Good. I'm well. I'm listening at the show, and and we uh, <clears throat> it's funny because we just had a show about this yesterday. The mm-hmm. the people, the, the the people that's in my ELA, they was mm-hmm. talking about um, Oya and the suicide rate among young black men, and what, what you know what what they can do to really like kind of reverse the overall morale of black of you know black black boys black men. Because black men are, are are committing suicide at an extremely high rate, and um, and a lot of it has to do with feeling marginalized. Like you, you feel like you ain't got no no real purpose for being here. Mm-hmm. So what uh what ended up happening? I remember we were talking about homeschooling, and mm-hmm. I had run it across one of the sisters, and we're we're about to start a, a homeschooling district, and um. I will be will be one of the agricultural science teachers, and I was wanting to know <clears throat> if there's any way that some of the brothers on the line would f- how how would y'all feel about like either helping create a curriculum for it or being a mentor for it because we're gonna have to have you know construction like I said uh, a- agriculture uh, auto mechanics like we're trying to incorporate all of that as part of the class as part of you know the curriculum. So like I was just curious with regard to if anybody was willing or interested in you know being a reference for like for the students in the class when they have questions about stuff. Awesome, awesome. Is there is anyone listening? I think everybody kind of muted themselves out. If you're listening, brother Dietrich, K. I'm, I'm with it. I'm all, I'm with that all the way. It's all right, cool. we're, uh, I just got back in the car. Could you repeat what you asked? Sorry. We, uh, the, the ELA that I'm part of in Atlanta, we're starting a uh, homeschool program where, like, uh, 
pretty much basic. Well, no, not basically. This is what it is. They're going to have the homeschool curriculum. You know, the, the regular base, math, science, you know, English, you know, classes. But we're, we're going to have electives as well. Me, I'm, I'm going to be in charge of the physical education and agriculture and plant science division. Because, like, that's what I went to school for and that's what I deal with. But as far as, like, I heard y'all was talking about construction. How open would y'all be to doing, like, an online seminar or, like, being on a mentorship program? That will help mm-hmm. the students, you know, get a better over and understanding of how to, you know, do construction because that's something that I'll be interested in too. Just like just make it an online course. Like we have we like we get like some wood and you know, get get like a shed or something and then um just like make a model, like a shop class. And then, mm-hmm. you know, y'all could like remotely teach the class or like when the students mm-hmm. have a trouble. I'm having an issue with nailing. I'm having an issue with stripping my screws. I'm having an issue with measuring, you know, being able to cut what my mark is. Like, how open would y'all be to mentoring like that? That's an awesome right, idea. I'm, I'm you know it. what? You can, you can what? even uh, just do free Google Hangouts or something like that, Brother yeah, Patrick. yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. like I said, technology has made it so easy now. Like we can, like you said, we can do these online classes or like I said, a Skype session, a, yeah. a hangout, anything, you know, to make it really easy. And like I said, those services are free. Yeah. yeah I mean, like, like you know, I, I would, I, I, I would rather, you know, I want, I want some brothers I can trust. Like I'm, I'm listening to everybody on the line. You know, you got the brother, the 804 brother. You know, mm-hmm. he, he, he's, he's doing it. Yeah, Brother Shaka, he's doing it. Brother Byron's already doing it. Brother Armour. This is something, y'all, you know, y'all are professors, in my mind, when it comes to y'all profession. So, like, if there's a way, because, like I said, we're supposed to be starting this up in January. And I know myself, you know, I'm going I'm to be handling more of the agriculture and large animal husbandry division of it. So, like, you know, as far as, like, the construction, I never really got into construction. But that's just, that's something that you know. Along, we can start it off with kids and like, hey, hey, fathers, you know, y'all might want to come and listen to this too. Now, you know, you know mm-hmm. that that sink that sink stopped up. Ain't nothing stopping you from learning with your son. Ain't like you got time on right. hand. Everybody's homeschooled, so I think in order that's that's a that's a little way we can boost the morale of black men because a lot of black men are embarrassed the fact that they don't know certain stuff. So this mm-hmm. is like a slick way, not a slick way. It's, it's, it's a creative way to teach both the students, the, the children, because these kids are like nine and under, and a way for the, for, the, for the adults to listen in, too. So, like, if your son asks, like, Daddy, what's the miter saw? I don't know. Let's, let's get on Google Hangouts and find out. Well, this is the miter saw. This is what it does. This is how you use it. Yada, yada, yada. And just, you know, start, start you know, brother supporting brother. Like, I know, I know you don't know how to. I know you don't know how to plant nothing, so I'm gonna tell your son, and this is how you help him. And that way he knows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. For the D trick. For the D trick. Yes, Hi. It's uh, it's Hi. Um, really? um, I would be very happy to support you with the agriculture in any way that I can. Um, mm-hmm. I am unfamiliar with the climate in Atlanta, but I do know about organic farming. And so I would be happy to help with that. I think it's fantastic what you're doing, and to get and, and to be getting young people into growing their own crops is a <laughs> massive deal. So I congratulate you, brother. So I'm happy to support you in any way that I can. Thank you. Now, what uh, what aspects of agriculture are you? What like what's your expertise? Because my, mine is more along the lines of livestock. Like what's what's yours? Mine is um. Vegetables and fruit, my brother. <laughs> organic, <laughs> organic, um, mm-hmm. organic. So um, I'm quite happy to. Um, I'll, I'll have to do some research into the um, climate in in Atlanta and so forth. But yeah, man, get, get, to get young children to, to start growing their own crops is, is wonderful. And I find that getting them to grow things that you know, with young children, they they sometimes they're not as patient. So you might want to get them to get something to see really quickly so they can see it growing and they can send to it and have an understanding of, of the benefits. But I'm, I'm quite happy to help you with it anytime. anytime. Okay. Okay, cool. Because I know the, 
down here, you know, you, you kind of in a sub arid climate. You know, it's 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 sub arid with cold winters, but the winters really the winters really don't last long. Like, you know, here it's it's all about your time and I think that I think that's any agriculture. But um uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a it's a sub arid climate. And um Georgia, Georgia and I won't necessarily say the south, but Georgia has a drought period. Like they, they have droughts and stuff. So like mm-hmm. okay. just, just just being able to manage the drought, being able to manage, you know, what crop to what crop to, you know, grow, what crop to retire. Because I know in agribusiness down here, let's say you got there's a surplus in soy. So when you look at those manuals, when you look at the World Trade uh when you go to worldtrade.com and you see that there's a a, a a surplus in something like soy. So what you could do is you can go and plant soy and then report it to the USDA and the USDA will come out and tell you to retire it, which means burn it. And then they pay you to burn your crop so the price of soy won't go that won't drop too low. So they, they do a lot of stuff like that here. So like I you know, a brother like a brother like you, like you can like really like not only just, you know, uh the, the actual, you know, ins and outs of physically out there doing it, you know, which which plants to plant next to each other, which plants choke each other out, what a weed is. Yeah. Also, the agribusiness aspect of it. That way, you know, because my, me, myself, my goal is to, I have a, a, a food truck, and my goal, hold on. That's the only thing I don't like about Atlanta. It, it, airport is everywhere. <laughs> but uh, but uh, my to grow my own produce for my own food truck, and you know have mm-hmm. my, have my own restaurant where like, you know it's kind of it's gonna be kind of crazy, but pick 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 your dinner, and we do mm-hmm. it right down the spot, you know with uh with free with real like uh awesome. free range chicken, mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so like I, I'm gonna I'm gonna need help with it because like I said I my 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 uh, expertise is more along the lines of animal science. Like I said, I, we okay. had to take it, and I and I and I was on the horticulture team at a theme park, so I know how to grow certain things. But as far as like someone who's actually doing it every day, I would love to have you know, you know, uh, a more seasoned hand on that with me. Okay. Well, both these I don't do it commercially, but I do bring mm-hmm. my family from the land I've got. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. yeah, that, that's what, Solid, we, that's what we need. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's our yeah. story. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and the good Dietrich, thing about you, CDC, yeah. I was going to ask you if you would like to um, give your information out to the people on the call so that they can get in touch with you as well. Yeah, y'all, y'all can ring my phone, man. My number is 615-720-4401. Like, y'all, mm-hmm. y'all can just ring my phone. And, and y'all, can, mm-hmm. uh, y'all can look me up on... on, on uh, Facebook as well as Dedrick Tucker that you know is going to be a, a football player in green but you know I, I like Tucker. uh-huh can you just repeat your number please Dedrick I didn't have a pen at the time 615 yeah 720 mm-hmm. 4401 thank you you know I, I, like I said I, I think with, with the brothers on this line we could, we really could start our own, you know, mm-hmm. and, you know, and I don't, I don't really want to throw shade like this, but we can actually do what Dr. Umar Johnson been talking about, just yeah. on, from a digital perspective, because we're so far out, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I know for uh, at the the beautiful thing about Atlanta is you can, I can, you can pretty much get to anywhere in Atlanta fairly quick. It's not far from the Carolinas. Uh, it's the biggest airport in the United States, so you can fly anywhere straight from Atlanta and a lot of people will migrate here for the Afro- Afrocentric like learning experience because mm-hmm. there's a lot of uh, home schools and a lot of uh, Afrocentric charter schools so if the brother was interested like I said we really could you know develop and we help each other with the curriculum because you know we you know me and we're like come here do this do this no nah, that ain't like how- what, what, what's the, I don't know but you take that you put it over there and you cover it up with that if, you know just just you know do a like a more like a curriculum to it because we'll just we'll just tell them how to do it but this is what this is this is what this does this is why this does this mm-hmm. you know that's what i'm gonna make do. those short videos yeah mm-hmm. 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 i'm really Great. happy you really made me smile over the trick <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, so, uh, 
you really made me proud because you know by showing by showing young people how to grow their own crops, yeah. you're you're giving them a skill. You're giving them um, skills in which they can improve their own health and improve the health of their families that are, that are to follow them simply by growing their own crops. Yeah, and it, so and I'm really you, happy, man. Yeah, and, and I figure it's, it's something that you can actually watch. You know, a lot, a lot of times, like a lot of the young fellas, when you listen to them talk, like, man, what's the thing about man? School boring, man. We learn the stuff, yeah. man. We ain't gonna use. They ain't gonna use trigger numbers. Well, at least right. when you when you when you growing a bean, a bean plant in a petri dish, every day is gonna change. So it keeps your keeps your mind, you know, kind of busy, or mm-hmm. you know, yeah. being able to to know which chickens are, you know, which chickens are the egg layers, like which one is the dominant. Chick. Just just paying attention to your livestock, like when your goats are eating, you know, how which which what which, which one we gonna use to test to see which one I'm in heat, which one is in heat, which one I'm are, you know, not letting the other ones eat. You know, stuff act stuff that'll keep I don't want to use blog talk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Go ahead, DJ. No, no, I, mean, I was I was just saying like, you know, I I really you know, I'm I'm glad y'all are open for that because I think that'll just close the gap with a lot of men too. Like we can have right. a, you know, a, a children's session and in a you know in a grown man adult session, you know, like mm-hmm. you know Stop letting me and come in your house and fix up. Like I, I, you know, I told my ex that she was like, "We gonna call the, the man next door to come hang the TV." I said, "Yo, what? <laughs> I ain't no another man finna come in my house and put nothing on nothing." Like, no, you don't do that. That's like me eating another woman's food. I'm just not finna do that. So you yeah, know. there's protocols for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, for that one. Like, look, if I need the help, I'm gonna call the man next door. But if, if I don't need right. the help, don't 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 put it in there. Don't put it put it in the mix, please. No, <laughs> no, stop that. You know. Hey, but, but I, brother Deep Trick, man, I'm I'm all yeah. for it, man. And, I, and I, I'm like I told, I'll say about my carpentry skills. I would consider myself to be intermediate. I'm not a hundred percent, but I'm learning, and I think I'm always gonna be learning doing that. I am good at framework. I am good at drywall. I'm good at floors. I am good at building furniture and doing closets and stuff like that. So those are the things that I'm I, I, I'm more stronger at. So and, and plus this is like something that um, honestly the way when I look back in my life I think this this should have been a route that I took when I was at at, at 18. You know, at, inside of high school, there's certain, certain things that I, inside of me that I should have took into it. And, and this is a good idea, good, good way for the youth and the and the and the men to actually get in touch with this this area in their life. Because one thing I've noticed living here in Tampa, the most the men that are most successful are men that have their own carpentry or some kind of uh, uh, technical business here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I always I, need I, that. I, yep. Yes, it's always needed, especially electricians. You know what I'm saying? Electricians is one of the big yes. things that you can do. Uh, electricity to HVAC, like uh, air conditioning and stuff like that. So there's a lot of good opportunities within that. So I'm at the beginning stages. I haven't even developed a business yet. I still need to go get some certifications and stuff like that. I'm, I'm hoping I will be able to get that, get into that next year. But for my carpentry and my handyman work and so forth and so on, I can get that started ASAP. And hopefully I'll be really moving forward on it next year. So, but and I'm further. My brother, I'm going to interject just for a minute. I want you, I want to ask you too, if you would like to share your information about your business, what you do, or if anybody would like to get in uh, contact with you. How okay, they currently, okay, currently I have two businesses. You can find me on um, Facebook at Here to Their Delivery, uh, or you can find me on Facebook. Actually, you can find me in all social medias with those names, Here to Their Delivery and Art of War Media. Uh, my here today delivery focuses on legal document delivery, uh, process work, service to process, and case lookup in a lot of um, uh, uh, local, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, oh, I'm getting the word wrong, uh, couriers, courier service, local courier also. I also deliver local packages from here to there, uh, day delivery. Um, my artwork media company is a media company and what we try to do with the media is be able to um, set up your ideas and it goes from, goes from personal to all the way up to major corporations meaning if you have an idea you have a product you have a service you're trying to sell you're trying to uh, get a point to get the point across 
we're able to um, do audio, visual um, production for you and start broadcast, putting you into a uh, plan for your own marketing and uh, strategic, um, strategic attack on your audience. We focus on your audience also, like me, one of the biggest things that I have dealing with music uh, or in the media and the audio section is that I really kind of target my audience with that. Uh, there's a lot of music and a lot of things that I don't really uh, agree with, so I don't really promote in that, that genre. So, But if you want to check me out, I, I have those, you can look in all social medias under those two names, Here to Their Deliveries and Art of War Media. And um, you can connect with me at that. Um, with, with the brothers, I would rather give you my personal email, but I'm not going to do that over the phone, over the line. So uh, if you can, just um, I, I got your number, Brother Dietrich, and um, I'll give you a call. And then Brother Byron, I, I definitely want to get in contact with you. So I don't know exactly how, to, how, we, how we're going to work that out. You are on Facebook, right, uh, Amar? They can kind of message you through Facebook, possibly? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you can probably send a quick message to him through Facebook. Uh, I think his. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, brother Anwar, but I think it is under his name. I'm. Let me see. Let me look for it. Yeah. Anwar. Uh, it's, it's his full name, so you can uh, look him up that way too. He'll give you that full information when he comes back. But I am so enjoying uh, the call today. Um, making a lot of good connections and like I said this is what it's about trying to create that community and we, and everything is global now so like we have the technology to do it we don't have to necessarily travel to each other uh, anymore it'd be nice to you know meet up every once in a while of course but it's not it's not necessary you know in this day and age and um, we've got about 30 minutes left in the show I want to give out the number one more time for anyone that has any comments on anything that's been said so far. The number is 347-945-7680. Just press the number one and I'll uh, bring you in. I think uh, Brother Shaka got disconnected again. I'm going to bring him back. Uh, Shaka. Greetings, greetings. I, I, I have one comment I wanted. I, I couldn't, I didn't know how to unmute myself. But, um, oh, okay. Uh, I want to. I wanted to know is there is it possible, um, and maybe this is something I'll have to send to questions. Um, uh, the email. I think it was mm-hmm. the question. I can't remember. You can ask. Uh, go ahead. At the Doodle House or something like that. Questions, questions at anewnation dot org. But go ahead and ask the question. So, is it possible to incubate? Um, so you have like five or six men on the phone who have. Uh, um, Different different goals and endeavors. Um, is it mm-hmm. possible? And, and some of it is there's a lot of overlap. Uh, so there's reason to network. Is it possible that we could? Is, is there space? Maybe a forum, a room, a temporary room that can be created um, under uh, Anu Nation, where we can kind of have a conversation in that forum about what it is that we're doing, what we need help with. Who do you Definitely. know? I know this person. You know, I'm in Definitely. Atlanta. I'm in DC. That kind of thing. If, if you are a student, if you've signed up for the free class or phase one of the training, there's a student forum there that everyone okay. can utilize. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is everyone here a student? Yes. Uh, uh, okay. So everybody's back, uh, mm-hmm. has access to that anyway. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to uh, go ahead. I'm uh, I'm more finished with what you were saying. Then I'm going to bring in another caller. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I apologize. I had somebody looking at me when I was at the in front of their okay. house. They were looking at me crazy. But, but uh, my, my, my number is pretty public too. So my number is 813-728-4434. Once again, 813-728-4434. So, you mm-hmm. know, I, that number connects you with everything. Like, it's my direct line. So, uh, I don't have any real business uh, delegated phone cor- re- currently, but it goes directly to me. So if you guys want to give me a call, you can do it like that too. And uh, just to add, I'm going to keep on uh, talking about these free services. For you all that are looking for a business number, 
Google has it. You can get you a Google number and designate it to your business. You can connect it to your website, to your email address, everything. It's totally free. So for those of you that are looking for that, um, that's available as well. I'm going to uh, go to the set. It's mm-hmm. funny that you mentioned that. I was on Google Voice yesterday. I was just trying to read into it, but it, it, it kind of... Yeah. It, it has some functionality issues, but I, 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 I was looking into it last night. It's funny that it comes up today. Yeah, I'm um, happy to get yeah, into it now. Yeah. <laughs> you can connect it. You can connect it to your phone number so that you're not getting, you know, all. So when it, you know, so it'll come through Google, so you know specifically, you know, where it's from or what it's about. So everybody's not calling your phone all day and night. But yeah, you can use Google uh, Google Voice for that. Um, I'm going to bring in another caller, a six six two. Greetings, you're on Community Radio. Greetings, Sister Kim. How are you? I'm well. How are you? <clears throat> I'm fine. Hello, everybody. I'm I am calling because I was just thinking about your 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 uh, the speaking on on Nate Parker's movie. Mm-hmm. And I realized, you know, because I listened to the the talk last week about why do we hate each other, and I actually was thinking that. I'm not in that position because I work at a predominantly black facility and I thought we were all getting along. <laughs> 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 and I just started watching things after that last talk you had and I just realized that we really don't have respect for each other as people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's sad, but and, it's true. <laughs> I mean, it's really sad. It hurt my feelings because I thought I was in the right spot. Mm-hmm. But um, as far as Nate Parker's movie, I think there was like a, a, a effort to try to downplay his efforts on that in that movie and to not let him make money off of the movie. I think he's going to make it anyway, or he already has, but I still think it's going to be a good movie. And from what I was reading, he was uh, exonerated. They didn't have any right. proof that he committed whatever crime he was supposed to be had committed. And we all know if there was any perception that he had he'd still be in jail he wouldn't be out here to make right. a movie so exactly. I had to take that that way mm-hmm. not to mention all of the other people in Hollywood that aren't melanated who have been brought up on charges and convicted who are still running from those convictions uh, Roman Polanski you know <laughs> so many you know there's so many people in Hollywood and even in that interview that I was speaking about um, on the Breakfast Club or whatever, um, someone asked him that question, you know, when you thought about making this movie, were you afraid that all of, you know, all of your little skeletons and demons and everything from the past were going to come to light once, you know, once you got to try to get this out? And, you know, he was like, you know what? It's expected. He was like, I'm a man. I can... Uh, Anything that I've done or whatever in my past, I've taken accountability for, you know, I can deal with it, you know, because he felt like his message and the, his purpose of um, making that movie was so much greater than that. So whatever beatings he had to take, he was going to take it. And, you know, that speaks to what Chief was speaking about previously on this show, how, you know, as men, you know, get over it take the beating and keep moving. You know what I mean? So, yeah, he did address yeah, I got, that. I got the stick on that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so he was like, you know, he wasn't worried about it. He was completely focused on that mission. He got it done. And so I would just, of course, I like I said, I, I plan to see the movie uh, coming up this strong end. So I'm looking forward to it. And I, I really thank him for making that movie. I haven't seen it yet, again, but... It's gotten a lot of great reviews and some some bad ones. And and just to show you how the media and different things will come out, I remember right before, you know, when at the height of all of this, when he about him getting the movie out, another one came out called uh, The Free State of Jones with Matthew mm-hmm. McConaughey, where mm-hmm. he was this uh, white guy, you know, uh, in Mississippi who launched an uprising <laughs> amongst people to try, you know, gathering uh, poor whites and, uh, and, and slaves to fight against the Confederacy. So, you know, another distraction 
just like you know they brought up how roots was fictional another dis- distraction anytime you want to get something out or when you're trying to fulfill your mission you're always going to come under opposition like somebody is going to try to deter you from doing what you're supposed you know what you're supposed to be doing but you got to you know roll with the punches you got to keep moving like if you're committed to what you want to do so yeah they come at you with all types of stuff even got black women all up in arms about you know his charges and allegations you know again speaking to that whole self-hate thing you know trying to find some kind of way to knock us you know to knock us down or to you know stop another brother from doing what he's supposed to do so yeah, I just wanted to bring that up. But have you seen the movie yet? You said you haven't seen it. I have not seen it yet. Okay. I will. I'm still working nights. I don't know. I'll get it together one mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. But and, and what bothers me also is that I think as a group of people, we are strong people. So why do we fall for the okie doke all the time? Why is it so Every easy time. to get us distracted with, with dumb stuff and take us away from what we should be doing as a people? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what? I think. Because, I think mm-hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. No, go ahead. Say, all of this, this Nate Parker stuff, this, um, you know, if you look at the timing of both them movies, like you got the Nate Parker thing, and all of a sudden they want to holler about this rape stuff, but they weren't talking about that when they did, when he did Red Tails and Great Debaters right. and all that other stuff. That mm-hmm. was really just as pro black as what he's doing now. But if you look at the timing of what, what else is coming out, it's that movie about that young girl that does chess. Oh, the, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, Queen, oh, Queen, Qu- Queen of Cosway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, Queen of... You got that coming out. And now you have the whole Nat Turner thing. And I was... Now, this is just me being, you know, I guess bringing the chaos, is is, is uh, Chief said. But <laughs> do, do y'all think that this is a way, that this is a subliminal message to black men and women? about how, okay, you have one story where the young woman overcame triumph of oppression of black men who was oppressing her in order to triumph and end up doing fairly well for herself. And on the flip side, you have a black man that said that's enough, and he did all these great things, but at the end of the movie, he still ended up dead. The author mm-hmm. is a subliminal message to black men, black women, and white people, because like, Dr. Phil was like, you know, there's a reason well, the reason that the movie got great reviews because white people are left out of the theater feeling actually relieved. They're like, oh my mm. goodness, he was he was just, you know, he was just hell on the wheels. I, I'm glad that's over with. That'll never happen again. Do, do, y'all, do y'all think that that's um, conditioning black men to be like, no matter how hard you fight, no matter how good you are, no matter how much of us you actually kill, no matter how much progress you make, at the end of the day, we're going to get you. And black women, like, no matter what you do, you can always, we, both of us can always overcome on the, at the black man's expense. Do y'all think that that could be a little bit subliminal programming with that? You know what? That's a, that's a good point that you brought up. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen uh, Queen of Cotsway or or anything but I've, I've heard about it I didn't know that that's what it was about um I think that there are always you know like I said always challenges that we have when we're trying to present a position especially for black men like you said none of that controversy came out as long as he was doing movies that weren't so blatant militant you know that weren't right I don't, I don't like using the word militant but movies that were uh Soft, that just kind of, you know, you were still just kind of in a in a in, in more of a female kind of position. You know what I mean? Um, none of that came out as long as he was doing those type movies. Only with this one, there's all of this controversy. This movie just pops up out of nowhere. Free State of Jones, Free State of Jones, or whatever it was. Um, all this stuff starts to pop up. So to me, I'm like, Chief, when I if Somebody tells me not to look. <laughs> I'm gonna look. <laughs> that's that's the stuff I want to zero in because I'm trying to figure out. Well, what did, what do you not want me to see? Um, but yeah, I think that there are tons of efforts uh, put against uh, black men to to stand up. And you know, just a reminder. You know, all of us are kind of interested in in uh, African spirituality and everything. All these spirits and energies and things that we're calling on 
for strength and everything. Like those people died. <laughs> some of those, some of those energies died doing, you know, fulfilling their purpose. So I don't think that death or the fear of death should be something that we're um, actually that that gives us pause because we know that the soul doesn't die. We know that there are energies that we can call on to infuse us, you know, with that energy or with that spirit. So we don't die. You know, you may try to kill us or whatever, but we can always come back. Uh, as long, like I said, as long as we're getting along and and coupling up and having children, there's a possibility that that ancestor can come back. You know, so things like that should, you know, going back to what she said about men standing up and not worrying about taking the bruises, you know, I think we have to keep that in mind as we're calling on Malcolm X and Marcus Garvey and all these other energies to, to help us along, all these other ancestral spirits that we're, we're asking to help us. Like, we don't die. That spirit and that energy, as long as it's fed, will live on. So that's just my opinion. That's strong. That's just strong opinion that I agree with. And uh, mm -hmm. I will, I will, I will say that um, I haven't watched the movie. And just because of those conversations that uh, Chief has said, especially what he just said recently in the last uh, uh, the Sunday show, America is good at breaking down your confidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, it might not have been. It might not have been last week. This week, it might have been the first. Uh, first show from this magician mm -hmm. that we're talking about, and um, and I I, I listen I, I study well I've listened to Dr. Phil Valentine multiple times and I respect him as a teacher, so I, I know exactly what Brother Dietrich was talking about when he said that uh it's always uh uh those type these type of movies are movies not for us it's for white people to feel uh confident when they walk out of the movie theater. And um, mm -hmm. I chose not to watch the movie, which, but I would rather I would like to support the brother just because he's doing stuff that a lot of us are. A lot of us, when we get into media and get into entertainment, we don't pay attention to because he's doing movies that are showing us in a whole different light. Now, mm -hmm. my thing about this particular movie is that it's coming in a time when there's a narrative trying to be built across the nation. Which right. I agree with to a certain degree because I just think there's people got to start taking in responsibility. I think a, a certain culture has been killing brown and indigenous people mm -hmm. for multiple years, for thousands of years, and they don't take responsibility for their actions. That's my belief. Yeah. Say and yeah. think that. So here here when we look at these movies and we're still walking out with the symbol of a black man being hung with legs, the, the things that we're looking at is his feet dangling. We're mm -hmm. at the end of the movie, what I've been heard, what I've been told. Now I'm saying I haven't seen the video. This is the imagery that I don't need to see. If I don't see my people and my, the people that I consider to be in my culture at the top of the mountain when the movie's over, I, I really don't want to uh, expose that to my children. I don't want to expose that to any of my any anybody that I love truly, because that's just going to be a uh, sign or, or 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 some imagery that's stuck in their head, and that they're going to have to have a conversation about and have to be disturbed about about and so forth and so on. So that's how I felt mm -hmm. about the movie. I still haven't seen it. I do feel like. There should be uh, uh, some monetary support going to the brother for doing what he's doing. But I, I just don't want to be in a big uh, movie theater with a whole bunch of people watching this and getting not only my vibration that I'm getting from the video, but getting their vibration that they're receiving from the video. It's just something I'm mm -hmm. sensitive to. And I know personally, I just don't want to be in that atmosphere. I'll watch that at my home whenever it comes out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hey, um, uh, oh, go ahead, hello. sorry. I had I had a quick question because you you just made me think. Now, when you were saying that, that that is a powerful image to see a a a a a, a person who fought so hard for us end up like that, and it makes me ask the question: What did he accomplish by doing all that? So, how mm -hmm. do we take that 
energy? How do we how do we how do we channel that energy? How do we channel that intensity, that passion for his message into what we're doing now? Because see, none of this matters if we're not using the energy or the spirit for what his in, his in, initial purpose was for. Was it not? Like he he did all of that and got this great well, movie. He finna profit off of it. You know how, how do we take that that turn of spirit and 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 and, and progress it forward? Because I think when when a spirit, a movie like that is made is to either do one of two things: it's to either kill something or birth something. Uh, I, w- I would well, say focus up. on our feet. I would say focus on our feet because what they tried to do with that. You gotta understand about the feet. She broke this down. Look, we you you give your mojubas to your feet, your legs, your arms, shoulders, your body, right? Focus mm-hmm. on our feet. Understand what our feet are doing. When we when we use our feet, we use them to walk forward. We we use them to trek backwards. It's never a time that our eyes are walking, are watching what's coming from behind it. But our feet are built to move forward. So when we see our feet in that film, when we see that our feet dangling and not being able to touch the ground, look at the imagery on top. We're not able to touch the ground. Our feet are dangling, lifeless. You know what I'm saying? Then, you can't ground yourself. Yeah, yeah, ground yourself. Everybody ground yourself. Ground yourself into what you need to do. Like Brother Pedro, ground yourself into the things that you love. Ground your things into the things that you have heart for and move forward on this. And I, and that and I, I just thought, you know, that last, that conversation, because I haven't really even seen the image. I don't really want to see it. I have a, I have a, uh, a image of it in my mind already that I don't really want to have a physical image of. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But that that concept of the feet being raised off the ground, lifeless or dying, going to the point where it's becoming lifeless, that that can that like psychosomatically makes us really think like, whoa, we can't move anymore. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So we gotta I, what we need to do is make sure our feet stay grounded and our feet stay moving and active. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, alongside and- of our head and our shoulders. And to add to that, um, and to answer Dietrich's question, how do you how do you tap into that energy the same way we do Oshun, Shango, um, any of the Orishas, any of the energies that we're working with? You do it the same way. His spirit came back in, in Nate Parker and gave him the inspiration to move forward to make that film. You know, so we can use it and, you know, we can use that in many different ways. And just to add, um, I was doing some reading or whatever. Um, not only was he, he killed, but he was skinned and he was decapitated. And those body parts, of course, if you study slavery, like a lot of those body parts and things that were that were taken most of them keep them on the mantle on their mantles or they pass it down through their family line do not think that they're not doing rituals with this with our body parts they're still doing it even in the medical industry when you donate blood or when you have blood drawn or you know the case with henrietta Lack. you know they're using yeah, these things. yeah. they are definitely using it i'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you how bad it is out here quick. in Atlanta. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Brother Dietrich, but let me just add something. Do you guys realize that they just gave back the body of Nat Turner to their to their people? I had I posted mm-hmm. something on my on my page, and uh, they just gave them back, gave them back after a hundred, I think eighty seven, one eight seven, I think one hundred eighty seven years. Mm-hmm. They just gave his body back to his family for them to have a burial. Right after this yeah. movie, I don't know. I don't know if you just uh, if you peep that out. I have the article on my resonate internal shining external page, but uh, mm-hmm. that, that that right there is just like but just to add on to Jim on what you're saying. Yo, know, they've been yeah. they, they and I think I think you know you yeah we always have to close up close to, and I think that's this is just a part of them closing the ritual. So I, I, yeah. I think there's a, so much stuff. And, and mind you, those bodies, I don't think they probably sent back the entire body. I'm pretty sure that uh, there are some members of his body that they, they're still in possession of. Um, I'm going to bring in another caller real quick. This is uh, 443. Greetings, you're on Community Radio. Greetings, y'all. How y'all doing? Greetings. 
Mm-hmm. What's going on? <laughs> I was trying to, <laughs> I was trying to, you know, just listen uh, today uh, about this topic, especially when the men got to talking and network, and I, and that's just beautiful what y'all doing, and I hope that. You know, y'all really do link up and things will um, manifest because I think it'll be helpful to um, a lot of people. Um, Mm -hmm. I I do want to kind of take this in a slightly different direction, and I'm sure a lot of people are not going to agree with me on this. But this is an open forum, so I'm going to say what I got to (laughs) say. Um. I haven't seen the movie either. I do plan on seeing it. Um, I've always been intrigued with the story of Nat Turner. Um, I don't know all of the story of it, but I've I've heard bits and pieces. Um, definitely not through um, school or anything like that, but just on my own research. So um, when I get a chance, yes, um, we're definitely going to check out the movie. And I do want to support Nate Parker because, you know, like you guys said, he, he put up his own money. He stopped working. And, you know, a lot of uh, black celebrities, I guess, apparently didn't want to have their name on it. So, you know, he got financial backing from other sources. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole thing about, you know, there's a black feminist movement that's like, oh, you shouldn't go see the movie because... You know, he raped that girl and she committed suicide and all that. I'm just like Brother Byron and everybody else. (laughs) There's no way he could have done that because he'd be under the jail by now. Right. It it had to have been like unanimous. This man did not do this. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. for that, yes, I'm not moved by any of that. I think you know, people should go and support the brother, whether you see it in a movie theater, whether you buy it on DVD or if it comes on Netflix or whatever, it it should be supported. However, I have a slight issue with the fact, and again, this is not going to stop me from supporting him, but this is just me being in my, my own little personal feelings. I do have a slight issue with the fact that this man is not married to a woman of color. And you know, actually, she's Hispanic. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm not going to go down the history lesson with that, but my thing is this. You dodged one bullet back in college with dealing with these other women. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that could have really ruined your life if somebody just felt like being petty and being like you know what yeah he did it you know what I'm saying so you dodged that bullet and you you couldn't find one African woman <laughs> you know what I'm saying? like nobody you ain't know nobody this is this is what you do so my again this is me being in my personal feelings about it and I think it kind of connects back to the self hate and mm-hmm. just the baggage that we as black women carry. It's it's a punch to the gut every time. I'm mm-hmm. not, I'm not even gonna front you on that. It's a it's a little jab mm-hmm. on the chin every time. You know, but again, I'm gonna support because that's what we do as black African women. Mm-hmm. We support. That's what we're supposed to do anyway. True. So um yeah, I mean that that I just really wanted to put that out there and I, I noticed that not too many people are talking about it. that. Mm-hmm. And um yeah. you know, maybe it's not that important. I don't know. But you know, I was talking to my husband about it and he was like, Yeah, I kinda feel some kind of way about that too. You know, I wanna support the brother, but it's like, damn, dude, like you couldn't you know what I'm saying? And then I'm looking at this dude, and he is fine. He looks good. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, he does. And he just <laughs> one, one black girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know this the wife that he has, they have children together, and, you know, supposedly she held him down and 
when he wanted to put the house up for the movie, of course, she was like, yeah, babe, you know, go ahead and do that. It's whatever. Kudos to her. And I'm being sarcastic if you don't hear that in my voice. But, <laughs> you know, that's... I, I'm a little hurt. I'm a little yeah. bit hurt by that. And like I said, it could be insignificant. Maybe we shouldn't even be talking about that. Please co- correct me if I'm wrong. But mm-hmm. that is... That is my feeling. Well, you know what, Sister Tasha, I I I hear you. I I, I we can hear you. Just a second. I totally hear you on that. That was something that I did want to bring out amongst you know the con. When I said controversy, I'm I was including that, and no one has spoken on it just yet. But initially, when I um you know did a little research on him as well, you know that like you said, it's always a punch to the gut you know, for, for black women. Um, but I also have to look at, you know, the women he's surrounded with in Hollywood. Um, mind you, one of the women he employed in the movie is one that's trying to, that is trying to take him down. And I have to ask myself, have to ask myself, you know, like I said, she's Hispanic. Um, not giving him a pass or anything or condoning it or dissing it or anything. But how many black women out there are really willing to stand behind their man when they are determined to fulfill a mission? How many are willing to to shut up when he says, I got to do this? You know, this is all our savings. I got to put the house up. You know, can you just please, you know, stick it out with me? How many, you know, how many black women are really willing or and are really, really supportive of their man to do something like that? Because I know women who have left their man for a lot less, <laughs> you know, um, who who don't do it, you know. So, again, you know, and I, and and that goes all that doesn't just end with Nate Parker that, you know, I, I look at that with Harry Belafonte, Sidney Poitier. You know, all these so-called great black men who don't have a black woman by their side, you know. So, like you said, it is a punch to a gut. But at the same time, I have to look at our women and look at our sisters and say, you know, how many times have our men had an idea for something and the light bill got paid late or they couldn't have that dress or those shoes or that car or whatever they wanted because... You know, he wanted to take the money and develop an idea or something that he had. You know what I mean? How how many of us are really willing to stick it out? And sometimes it's easier to deal with maybe um, uh, another, you know, maybe an African woman or you know, black women from you know different backgrounds or even you know just other melanated women. You know what I mean? But I I totally understand you. It is a punch to the gut. Um, But I think uh, as black women, we've got a lot of issues that we need to address, you know, when we see something like that. At the same time, look at it and say, you know what? We're not being supported. Why is it that um, every time a man, you know, we see them after the success, you know what I mean? And then we say, well, why couldn't he have a black woman? Well, maybe he did. And maybe he dumped or had to separate from 50 before he got with that Hispanic woman that was going to stick by his side. You know what I mean? So at the same time, it's it's kind of a wake up call to women to say, you know what, maybe I should have believed in the brother a little bit more, you know, because we don't necessarily do our part either in this. So sometimes when I look at things like that, I have to look at it. You know, how many women are willing to stay in the background or stand in the shadows while their man gets the attention or the accolades? How many, you know, how many Betty Shabazz's and Coretta Scott King's and, you know, all these other women are willing to just be the support? There's not that many out there. That is Um, true. That is true. And that's probably what makes their hurt even more. Is mm-hmm. because, like, yeah, I can envision that. I can envision him, you know, having, you know, black girlfriends or whatever along the way before he met um, his now wife. 
Um, and yeah, maybe it didn't work out. Maybe they were like, uh, I don't know. You don't have no job. You an actor. I mean, what is that? Mm-hmm. You know I mean, <laughs> how you go pay the bill? You know, so I, I can see all of that happening. And it just all hurts. It's all, it's, it's just all bad. But nonetheless, like I said, I will go in and see the movie and support. Mm-hmm. Um, an, another kind of weird thing about this whole movie and the timing and everything is like what um, Brother Anwar says like do I really want to see that you know again you know even Mm -hmm. though in knowing the narrative of Nat Turner and how he was such a rebellious person and you know what he did was phenomenal but for him to end up that way do Mm -hmm. I want to see that Mm -hmm. Not really, but I think it's something that does need to be seen. I think my my children need to see it. Uh, um, somebody's phone is making some really weird noises. If, if you're not yeah. speaking, can you please mute your line? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, okay. Tasha. You're still yeah. you're still on. Thank you. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a mixed bag of emotions. I mean, at the end of the day. It, you know, me going to see it trumps all of that. I'm going to, I'm going to go see it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot to think about. Yeah. You know, to, Do for, any for of men... all these reasons, it's not just a simple, oh, I'm going to go see a movie. It's it's a lot going on around it, which is yeah. weird because it's a movie, you know, but <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. But you know what? We could, We patronize a lot of other movies that have questionable uh, you know where the actors or the directors are questionable and we pay it absolutely no mind we still go right. and we're still going to take the family out to see it so um, I think you know like you said I think a lot I think the, the message behind the movie um, trumps all of that because mm-hmm. we're, we're still the same people who will take our kids to go see a Medea movie you know what I mean right. so you know, but um, just for uh, going back, if any of the men on the call would like to speak to what Sister Tasha brought up about uh, the whole, I guess, you, you know, you say interracial uh, relationship thing. Can I add one thing to it? Mm-hmm. That uh, what we're talking about, Hello? when I said narrative, uh, there's uh-huh. a greater narrative. There's a greater narrative that's happening in so there's a, great, there's a greater social narrative that's happening. And in America, from not getting to like, like looking at politically, okay? If America was going to fall, this would be the timing. When we have the elections going on, dealing with the two idiots, and then we have Black Lives Matter on one side, we have the feminine agenda on the other side, we have lesbian agenda on this side, they're dividing multiple, the masses. And Mm -hmm. the narrative of watching slave movies, not just dealing with Miss Nat Turner, but dealing with Roots and dealing with all this stuff, is igniting a fire, which we have, we've all, us as brown and melanated indigenous people all have, even down to the Indian situation that we were talking about in Utah, which I have not seen nothing about. But it's not just dealing with that, the concept of injustice, justice is happening in all of these communities. Mm-hmm. It's building tension. It's like they're pulling on a knot that's about to break. And that's yeah. why, and that's the reason why I was like, you know, I don't know if I want to put this in my mind right now. I'd rather be prepared for what's to come, what's to come in the future. And I, th- mm-hmm. I see it. I think sure a lot of us see this happening, especially our children are seeing it. So yeah. that, that's all I really wanted to add to it. And sisters, I, I appreciate the conversation about that. Um, I would say I, my boo is, is showing and proving y'all wrong right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> 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 you know what? Um, I also watched a, a, a video that Professor Griff did uh, talking about the movie as well, and just speaking on yeah, what you I were saying about 
about tensions building, he made the comment, he said, you know what, all this is coming about because like you said, none of this controversy came out when he was making other movies, you know, when he was, you know, being much softer and not, not so much of a threat or not having as much influence. And what he said was, you know, white people <laughs> know they have an ASS whooping coming. So <laughs> they know that all the dirt that they've done to so many people over so many years, like it's coming to a head. So they're doing everything that they can possibly do to, you know, to stave off that, that spanking that's coming. And, you know, when movies come out like this, like I said, we will support nonsense with no questions asked. There's no controversy around it. There's no, oh, this man raped a woman back in the day, or maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Um, he does, you know, he's not married to a, a, a sister or, you know, we support Scarface. I, I, I can't think of like, uh, there's so many black homes with Scarface posters in them, you know? So it's like, we'll support all of this other stuff that, that adds to our demise, you know? But when something comes out like this, we can come up with all types of excuses of why we should not patronize these type movies. And I think that's, that's just really gotta stop. Like, we really have to take a good look at ourselves and see you know, why are we supporting one thing, but when it comes to our stuff made by a black man, where it is seen through our eyes and interpreted from our position, not interpreted through some white guy or Jewish guy or whomever, when it's, or Quentin Tarantino, you know, it's not interpreted through their eyes. It's, in, it's from our point of view. We can, why is it that we can find so many excuses not to patronize it. Hello? Right. Yes, we can hear you. Is that Brother Shocker? Yeah, that's me. I'm sorry. Okay, I've been go going ahead. in and out trying to press the button. Okay. So so my, my thinking on this is, uh, I mean, it's an interesting way to look at it possibly, is why don't we own that, that market any, anyway? If it's going to be a slave movie, well, you know, why, why is it that we don't control that narrative or we don't control that market? Here's mm-hmm. an opportunity if you're going to have slave movies to have it be controlled right. and owned by black people, here's an opportunity to maybe go and support somebody who is probably going to do another one, but he might do, he might do IT the next time, or mm-hmm. he might do, uh, with Dessaline or, you know, Toussaint or something mm-hmm. like that. He, he, who knows what he's going to do next. Now that he's, he's broken through the door. Um, his whole thing, it might be rebellion. Um, mm-hmm. that might be his theme in the slave movies. Uh, that he does if you want to label them that way but um, this might be an opportunity for black ownership over that particular narrative and that's something that people are talking about Um, as as far as the interracial thing goes I think it's I think maybe it is important it's important to some people of course so you can't dismiss it but I think um, one of the things to look at would be the impetus um, you know maybe perhaps that the that the, the movie offers the community so from a community standpoint, if we were looking at him as a person, uh, from a personal standpoint, yeah, it's wonderful. Uh, maybe we should judge him as a person or a human being. But in terms of his idea and what he put forth um, mm-hmm. and what can come out of it in terms of what he hopes to, to achieve, he said, um, what did he say, a rebellious uh, oh, man, orientation? Or he, They asked him what he hoped to gain, and he, he, hoped, mm-hmm. he hoped there would be yeah. some form of rebellion out of this. Yeah. Um, he didn't say violence or anything like that, and he also wants to to make sure that people understand that um, uh, this you know black power does not mean black uh, what is it white hate or something like that. Like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So these these are all ideas that are to me. I don't think interracial dating is really uh, uh, has a direct connection with this movie. It may have a direct yeah. connection with Nate Parker, but mm-hmm. if Nate Parker was a trash man, we nobody would care. You know right. what I'm so whether he dated a white woman or to a man or whatever, a dog, mm-hmm. nobody would care. But because he's a director, I think we're missing a point in terms of um, what he's actually bringing to the table and what he's trying to trying to get us to, you know, maybe see or think about, and and also our abilities and how we 
can move things forward in our own uh, in our own right. I mean, the fact that he had to raise the money, he only had a hundred thousand um, dollars. Mm-hmm. You know, th- those are all important facts that he had to tell the, the public. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, nobody would know about those things, but yeah, we can we can research all of the other things, um, mm-hmm. or or they've been researched for us rather. Mm-hmm. So we have yeah. to be careful yeah. what we're told. I totally agree, and that's why I said, you know, I, I tread it very lightly before I even brought it up because, no, I don't, I'm not missing the point at all about the movie and what he's trying to get out there. The interview he did at the break, on The Breakfast Club was, I think, phenomenal and how he promoted the movie and the, the, re, the reaction and the change that he wanted from his artwork. I got all of that, and that's why I'm definitely going to support. Again, that that's just me and my and my mm-hmm. own personal feeling about about it. And mm-hmm. like Sister Kim said, he's not the only one. And I'm gonna tell you what: being down here in Florida, I see it all day, every day. Yeah. Black men have no love for black women down here I'm telling you and I say it all the time I'm so glad I'm already married cause I'd be ass out I'd be lonely like hell mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. messing around yeah. with these men down here like they they don't they don't want it they don't want none of it so mm-hmm. you know again that's just me being in, in my feelings and again sister Kim yes we do patronize some bull you know yeah. I went to go see straight out of Compton Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And and I liked it because it kind of took me back. It was nostalgia with the music and everything. But, um, yeah, I mean, look at all of the craziness behind that movie. The real life crazy. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So, yeah. I get it. I, I totally get it. But, you know, like I said, that's just me and my, my own little girly black girl mm-hmm. feeling. Totally. <laughs> Like I said, I, I, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. And um, I, I agree with some of the things that you said. But along with, you know, all the other lessons that we can take from this movie, I think that that's something that we as black women should also um, discuss and have a discussion with each other about. Because um, for the most part, a lot of us don't support our men. You know what I mean? So yeah. if a man is on a mission, he's going to he's gonna get with people who support him. Like if, if he only depended on black people to help him financially uh, get this movie made, it never would have been made. Because as right. you can see, like, like you said in the interview, none of them stepped up to offer any money. All these rappers, all these, uh, you know, athletes and all this other kind of stuff, nobody donated any money. So he had to go where the money was. So I think, um, like I said, the movie speaks to something even deeper that we should, um, that we need to talk about and that we need to deal with. And it connects to, like I said, the conversations we had last strong, just about self-hate and supporting each other. So yeah, it hurts. And don't get me wrong, when I hear these conversations about black men going their own way, uh, black women going their own way, all this other kind of stuff, like it hurts. It really and truly does. It really but hurts. But we got work to do. You know? Yeah, we got a lot of work to do. Yeah. And Kim. so, um, yes. Yeah. yeah, I think um, um, with regard to his um, interracial, interracial relationship, I think um, my understanding is that, that it's a young, it's a young gentleman that made the movie, and um, I'm sure he's in the process of. Evolving, mm-hmm. <laughs> excuse me, whether he knows that, whether he knows that personally or not. And so, yes, for now, his wife might be a Spanish woman, and they may have children. But who's to say that in a few years' time, he may not have two or three wives, of which mm-hmm. two or three, go, of which two could be African, and he's got African children. And That's true. you know, I would, I, I would just will that when he gets his fortune from. From the film, because I believe it's very successful for him, that he invests some of that into the African American community there to develop youngsters, mm-hmm. uh, you know, give people a break in in America. So yeah, he might be with the Spanish lady for now, 
and you know that the life cycle of that marriage I don't know how long it's going to be but um, you know I just will that when he gets his fortune from his, his movie that he invested part of that fund into the African community to develop young people behind him that would be good <laughs> that would be mm-hmm. good yeah mm-hmm. So, uh, we've actually um, come to the close. We've gone over our time quite a bit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close out. But this is just part one of the discussion. So, maybe between now and Thursday, some of you that are on the call that did not um, chime in uh, will uh, go and see the movie. And those of you that are on the call that haven't seen it, maybe between now and Thursday, you'll check that movie out and we'll further discuss some of the things that we didn't get a chance to go into a bit uh, on this particular show. So I'm looking forward to that discussion. Maybe we'll get into the whole interracial thing a little bit more. And some of the, some of the other things that we have to deal with, uh, like uh, Brother Anwar was saying, not wanting to see the violence or not needing that image, the interracial thing, uh, just being a supportive spouse. Um, There's so many different conversations that can come from, the the movie and the controversy around the movie so um make sure you tune in on thursday we're going to continue that discussion and i just would like to add that if you are um, interested in uh, joining anu nation or um, being a part of the movement that she has uh, got in the works and that has had in the works for some time make sure you go to a new life org to join the community and let us know uh, what you can contribute and what you're willing to uh, help out with. And we'll make sure we direct you in the right uh, place. And for the women that are on the call, if you would like to be a part of our Monday hangout sessions where we really kind of go in on some of this stuff, um, as far as, you know, the women's perspective, uh, you can do the same thing at a newlifeglobal.org. Just make sure you put in your message that you would like to be a part of the call and we'll make sure we send you the information to um, to be on that call. So um, thank you all for your comments. Uh, oh, 14 Keys. Yeah, make sure you pick up the 14 Keys, Chief's latest book. It's a heavy read, that. but it's, def- <laughs> it's definitely a really good read. It'll take you some time to get through this one. Mine's coming what? on the 21st. Yeah. Mine's coming okay. on the 21st. Yeah, <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, so make sure, make sure you pick that up. And as well, if you're a student, make sure you go back, listen to the archive, um, sign up for the our new spiritual training. All of that information is on sadulhouse.com. And if you have a question, <laughs> send it to questions with an S at anunation.org and we'll make sure we uh, try to get your uh, questions answered as soon as we can, okay? So until Thursday, thank you all for your participation and for your comments and your continued support and we'll be back with part two of this discussion on Thursday. Enjoy the rest of your day. Peace. Peace. What happened?